19 Hockey Sense tap, Tactic is going to talk about creating offense from behind the net. And so what we're going to look at here is uh, from a team perspective, how can making plays from down low behind the net uh, benefit your team or you as an individual to create some offense. So we're going to look at, instead of this week looking at keys to uh, using the back of the net, we're going to look at benefits. So why is it a good idea to get that puck in behind the net and try to create plays from there? So the number one thing here is that the net serves as protection from the defenders. So if you're standing behind the net with the puck, uh, the greatest player of all time, Wayne Gretzky, was famous for this. He, you use that net as protection. You can see the whole zone uh, in front of you. If a defender wants to chase you from behind the net, you can cut that net and uh, and lose the defender behind. So number one is you have that protection. Number two is that the defensive players are often caught puck staring and lose their coverage in front of the net. So let's imagine that I'm standing behind this net where I just drew the X. Defensive players' eyes are all now pointing back towards their own net, towards you with the puck behind. So what happens is they end up losing sight lines and losing players who may be behind them finding open ice. And the third point relates just to that is the goaltender also has to look at the puck. So he may lose sight of what's out here in front of him in the most dangerous ice. And this is an image here of the four windows. It's a tactic that goaltenders use when the puck's down low below the goal line. And I'll just explain it quickly. We don't need to go into too much depth, but the four windows basically uh, help goaltenders to know how they should be positioned when the puck's down low and where their eyes should be. So if the puck is here in window no number one, so if you're anywhere in this green space, the goaltender is going to be on his post looking over his right shoulder. Okay? If the puck moves, or if I skate with the puck into now the yellow area window number two, the goaltender is going to be more centered in his net looking over his right shoulder. If you were to amend to move back to number one, the goalie would shift back to the post. So this is how the system works. If you're to move now to window number three, the goalie would still be centered. He wouldn't move his positioning, but he would switch from looking over his right shoulder to now looking back over his left shoulder. And window number four is the same as one on the opposite side. He's going to seal his post and look here over his left shoulder. Now this is very important, especially the switch between window two and three. And you're going to see a couple clips where a puck carrier has the puck and it moves from windows two to three. And as soon as the goaltender changes from looking over his right shoulder to looking over his left, there's a play made back against the green. So the goalie loses sight of the puck. So we'll look at here at a couple examples. This is what we call a long cycle. It's where the player now cycles the puck all the way down low to behind the net. And if we look here, so now this goaltender from the example we just looked at would be on window number three. He's not right on the post ceiling but he's looking over his left shoulder. He now shifts to window number four. As he moves, now there you see the shift. Now he just moved from window four to three, now to two. So there's the head shift. What happens is he's now lost sight of anything on this side of the ice. You can see also defensive players looking at the puck, looking at the puck, and the guys in white, Minnesota, are basically trying to get open and find some space. So as he continues to move, if you keep an eye on the goalie's head, the movement there, the player with the puck knows now the goaltender is in that window four that we just identified. So a pass is made all the way across to where that open ice is. If I back it up, if the goalie is sealing this side, that means the opposite side is going to be open and available. Here's another long cycle, this time from the D. Minnesota's parked behind the net. There you can see the goaltender on window number one, sealing the post, looking over his right shoulder. You can also see the defensive players staring at the puck. The offensive players are moving to try to find open ice. And right here, you can see even the goaltender knows he's trying to communicate. I'm looking over this shoulder trying to communicate to my D to watch this side of the ice. 
the D doesn't make a good read. When that pass happens, that whole short side is now available for them. So the key too is patience with that the guy behind the net. Here we're going to see one off the rush. Patrick Kane. Okay, he's patient. Goalie's there. As the goalie moves from window one to two, and then finally to three, that's when the pass is made. And if I back this up, watch the goalie's head right now. He starts to move his head to look out the other side. A nice behind the back play is made. The player without the puck also does a very really good job here being in front of the net and reading off of that open ice in behind. We'll look at one more example here. Another cycle play, very similar. The goalie just shifts his head there, pass is made back the other way. So goalie shifts, pass is made back, and that short side is available. Watch the defensive players, how they lose their coverage here as well. Okay, the back of the net serves that protection. A lot of teams do not have do not chase behind the net. Instead, what they'll do is they'll switch. So this player will come here. This player will go. What happens in this clip is this player cheats and starts to jump behind the net too early, loses the coverage, and again you see a short side goal once that goaltender's head turns.